So can you briefly walk listeners through a little bit of the history and the origins of um, hypercholesterolemia or high cholesterol and the heart disease connection? Sure. So there is a disorder called familial hypercholesterolemia, which um, as soon as you could, um, you had blood test results, which were developed in the first half of the 20th century, um, you see an association in which there are people from childhood had extremely high cholesterol levels, which is a genetic disorder. And you do find that sometimes young people, um, even children, um, teenagers, people in their 20s, have a heart attack um, and they, with this disorder. So you have people that have high cholesterol. You have cholesterol actually in the arteries. Um, you see people young developing heart disease. You put that all together, and it's just logical to assume that the cholesterol is causing the heart disease. And that's actually what's promoted the fear of cholesterol beginning really in the 1950s. Um, and then continuing on, frankly, to the present day. Um, and one of the first approaches to, to treating cholesterol actually was to use vegetable oil and specifically corn oil. Um, there actually is a first clinical trial to lower cholesterol in people that were very high risk for developing heart disease was to use corn oil. And you had people told to cut back on saturated fat, which is another topic we can talk about. For sure. Um, and they had a couple few tablespoons of corn oil every day. And compared to placebo, in which people were basically told, go home and, you know, you're at high risk. You're going to be the control group. And unfortunately, they were expected to have very high rate of heart attacks. Well, three years later, the people with dramatically lower cholesterol as a result of using corn oil had almost twice as many heart attacks and died compared to the people that didn't use the, cholesterol and, uh, the corn oil and had higher cholesterol. And this published in British Medical Journal in 1965. And it's remarkable to me that people have ignored that, that paper, and yet they still see corn oil as being heart healthy. And, and this fit with sort of the misunderstanding, really, of, of physiology that was developing in the 50s and 60s. And I've talked about it, and people now become very familiar with our Ansel Keys, who knew nothing about heart disease, knew nothing about nutrition, became the leader in the 1950s and into the 1970s. Um, and he really was a uh, misled everyone to into the diet heart hypothesis, in which the idea he had was if you consume animal fat, which is primarily saturated fat, that it would ultimately clog the arteries and cause people to have heart disease. And it was completely wrong. There was never any support for that hypothesis, and yet it continues to this day. Yeah, absolutely, and then you know if we sort of shift over to into the 1980s if we stay on the cholesterol story here and lowering cholesterol became a real uh, primary clinical goal in that decade based on a few influential right. studies so could you maybe discuss some of the early research and you know, sure. the Mr. Fit study and some of the claims that were made um, and if they're supported by the data right and I've lectured on this as well so first of all there was a very long uh, very expensive study um, about seven and a half years in which you had men middle-aged men with the highest cholesterol. They actually tested a half a million men and had those that had the highest cholesterol, averaging about 270 total cholesterol, and they were the ones included in this study. The assumption was that having extremely high cholesterol would then increase the likelihood that they would die of heart disease. This is the LRC study that was published in 1984. Um, and then it was a relatively primitive drug that's actually still used now, which is cholestyramine, and it's a, a bile acid sequester, which actually binds to cholesterol and simply removes it from the body through the colon. And you can dramatically lower cholesterol using the cholestyramine. So they had these men on either cholestyramine or placebo for seven and a half years, and there was a dramatic reduction in cholesterol for the men taking the cholestyramine and no change in the men that were on the placebo. And uh, the findings were unequivocal. There was absolutely no difference in outcome between the men that had the lower cholesterol and the men that had the placebo. And this, I think, is documented as the first time deception has been used to amplify minuscule effects. What they did was take a difference. Literally, you're looking at a difference of about eight men in the placebo versus cholestyramine group, beginning with a half a million men down to about 3,500. Eight men, which was not statistically significant, but what they used was relative risk in which you can amplify a minuscule effect and make it appear very large. Mm 
And so that 0.4% difference between the two groups in terms of coronary events, you can then change that into what's called relative risk and you convert it into a 24% risk. And this is how they advertise their effect. They said we can lower cholesterol and reduce heart disease by 24%. And that 24% again is just statistical deception, which I've published a paper on about that. So that was the LRC study published in 1984 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Uh, the Mr. Fit you're referring to, one of those Mr. Fit, which tracked a few hundred thousand men, and they looked at their cholesterol levels and related to heart disease. And this was a frightening kind of paper because they said that you had to have cholesterol absolutely as low as possible. You want your total cholesterol to be at 150. Wow. And that literally is their reference point is 150, which we know is an unhealthy level of cholesterol. And what they said was that for every small increment, a 1% increase in cholesterol, you would increase your risk of heart disease by 4%. And so people with a cholesterol of 300 would have a 400% greater risk of dying of heart disease compared to someone whose cholesterol was 150. And this deception is just, um, I don't know, it's a travesty when you look at how this was deceptive. The actual difference in rate of heart disease between people with their cholesterol at 150 to 300 was 1%. 98% of the people in Mr. Fit, and this is following 350,000 people, 98% of the people did not die of heart disease. And yet what they did was they took the difference across the entire physiological range of cholesterol, which was a 1% difference. So the people at the highest level of cholesterol, 98% of them did not die of heart disease. People at the lowest level of cholesterol, 99% did not die of heart disease. The difference was actually 1%. But again, using relative risk, it allows you to amplify effects, and so you can create huge effects. That's how they created this 400% increase in death from heart disease. It's something that people who have, in a sense, declared war on cholesterol made us fear it. They've been using this kind of statistical deception now for decades. Yeah, staggering stuff in terms of uh, the numbers, and of course, this led to the, the classic Time magazine photo in the 80s with the the eggs and the bacon frowning and, and this fear of, of saturated fats. and you know. Exactly. Let me actually tell you. Sure. That article and that Time magazine cover was about the, the, the paper I just told you about in which there was no statistical difference between the two groups with lowering cholesterol or not. And that was a pharmacological study. It was not a diet study. And yet when it was reported in the media, they demonized dietary cholesterol, which had nothing to do with the study. And they demonize serum cholesterol as well. So in a sense, we really have to understand that there was an outright campaign to sell the idea that cholesterol caused heart disease. When in a sense now for decades, lowering cholesterol had failed entirely and associating total cholesterol to heart disease had entirely failed. Now that problem though, uh, the problem was you had uh, um, the um, Nobel Prize winners um, Goldstein and, and Brown and Goldstein in 1984 had written a Scientific American article saying LDL cholesterol causes heart disease. Well, once Nobel Prize winners say that something causes a disease, it, it had to be accepted as fact. And yet we now know that even LDLC um, is not very well correlated with heart disease, and people have generally given up on LDLC as well. So this was the 1980s, was a time when the cholesterol theory was failing. It was failing because cholesterol was not well associated with heart disease. Lowering cholesterol by means prior to the statins had not had any effect, any real effect on heart disease. But Brown and Goldstein won the Nobel Prize for showing that the LDL receptor was associated with heart disease. Therefore, the entire field was devoted to finding new drugs to be able to lower LDL. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. And of course, you mentioned you know, obviously, saturated fat intake being sort of a key uh, focus point to reducing that, reducing animal foods because the, obviously they contain that. You know, years ago, I spent a year living in the south of France, and of course, the cuisine there heavy in things like duck fat and pate and butter and cheese. Um, and of course, the diet over there, you know, somewhere around forty percent of total caloric intake comes from fat. 
much right. of which is from saturated fat. And I know you've you've um, written and spoken about this here, but how does? 